Now, I don't want you to get too excited just yet, but I think we might be getting some disclosure, y'all. And the reason I say that is because yesterday, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer dropped an atomic bomb on this conversation. This is from Newsweek. Chuck Schumer moves to declassify UFO secrets like JFK records. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has introduced legislation that could lead to a swath of U.S. government-held documents related to unidentified flying objects, or UFOs, being declassified. The Democrat from New York tacked an amendment onto the National Defense Authorization Act, which would create a commission with the power to declassify information, with Republican Senators Marco Rubio and Mike Rounds also giving their support. The government is under pressure to reveal exactly what it knows about UFOs in response to an active conspiracy movement existing around the subject. House Republican Tim Burchett said Thursday the government has, quote, been covering this up since the 40s during an appearance on News Nation, adding, I think the American people can handle it. This is what I was talking about. Congress is coming at this thing from every direction. You have uh, the House uh, subcommittee hearings at the end of the month. Um, you have Rubio and Gillibrand uh, putting language into the National Intelligence Authorization Act. And now Chuck Schumer is introducing this legislation into the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, it looks like this issue is getting surrounded on all sides by lawmakers who are re- ready to bring this out into the open. And I read this uh, bill yesterday, uh, this amendment, and um, it's 65 pages long. And the word disclosure is mentioned 77 times. It's astonishing. Basically, um, this is set. This sets up a nine-person commission, a commission made up of experts from various disciplines, including, by the way, an economist and a sociologist. Um, so this board is tasked with basically gathering together all of the uh, UFO, UAP-related material that's being held in any government office by any government entity or any commercial private entity that has ever taken any funding from the federal government. And uh, this basically allows this commission to exercise the full force of the law and go into these companies, these bases, these offices, anywhere that they need to go. They basically have carte blanche to go in and get any material they think they're going to need. And then working Together, they are going to make the determination about what this material is, what it means, if it can be declassified and put out to the public. And then, in tandem with the National Archives, this board is tasked, this panel, with basically creating a volume that contains all of this information. And then that volume would be made available to the public and anybody else who wants it. And it even has uh, provisions in there that spell out if something's not declassified for some reason or another, how frequently they have to go back and revisit that and decide if it should stay de- stay classified or be uh, reclassified in a different way. Um, and it's set up to basically move like a freight train. Um, there's a certain un- amount of time from the passage of the bill uh, that all of this stuff has to be completed. I think it's 300 days. Um, it's pretty astounding. Let's take a look through it together. It's 65 pages long. It's a little lengthy to do all at once, but um, we'll look for a couple little good bits and uh, pull them apart. Okay, so this is uh, the actual bill. Um, I searched the word uh, disclosure, and um, it shows up 77 times in the document, so it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, the title, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena Disclosure. The clue's in the name. So this is the first really interesting thing. The way that this is worded uh, is very specific. And um, just listen to this. Unidentified anomalous phenomena record. The term unidentified anomalous phenomena record means a record that is related to unidentified anomalous phenomena, technologies of unknown origin, non-human intelligence, and all equivalent subjects by any other name with the specific and sole exclusion of temporarily non-attributed objects that was created or made available for use by, obtained by, or otherwise came into the possession of the Executive Office of the President, the Department of Defense and its progenitors, the Department of War and the Department of the Navy, 
the Department of the Army, the Department of the Navy, the Department of the Air Force, specifically the Air Force Office of Special Investigations, the Department of Energy and its progenitors, the Manhattan Project, the Atomic Energy Commission, and the Energy Research and Development Administration, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, the Central Intelligence Agency and its progenitor, the Office of Strategic Services, the National Reconnaissance Office, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the National Security Agency, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Federal Aviation Administration, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Library of Congress, National Archives and Records Administration, any presidential library, any executive agency, any independent office or agency, any other department, office, agency, committee, or commission of the federal government, any state or local department, Government department, office, agency, committee, commission, on and on and on. Not later than 60 days after the date of the enactment of this act, the archivist shall commence establishment of a collection of records in the National Archives to be known as the Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena Records Collection. In carrying out subparagraph A, the archivist shall ensure the physical integrity and original provenance or, if indeterminate, the earliest historical owner of all records in the collection. The collection shall consist of record copies of all government, government government-provided or government-funded records related to unidentified anomalous phenomena, technologies of unknown origin, and non-human intelligence or equivalent subjects by any other name with the specific and sole exclusion of temporarily non-attributed objects, which shall be transmitted to the National Archives." We'll go through a little more here. Okay, this is really interesting. Section 7 of this amendment reads as follows. It's called Establishment and Powers of the Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena Records Review Board. There is established as an independent agency a board to be known as the Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena Records Review Board. In general, the President, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate, shall appoint, without regard to political affiliation, nine citizens of the United States to serve as members of the Review Board, to ensure and facilitate the review, transmission to the archivist, and public disclosure of government records related to unidentified anomalous phenomena. And when we look at the qualifications for the people that are going to be on this board, this is what we find. Persons nominated to the review board shall be impartial citizens, none of whom shall have had any previous or current involvement with any legacy program or controlling authority related, relating to the collection, exploitation, or reverse engineering of technologies of unknown origin or the examination of biological evidence of living or deceased non-human intelligence. Basically, no conflicts of interest. You can't have worked for a defense contractor and then like uh, be a part of this board. This is for, uh, this is for people who are uh, untainted. B shall be distinguished persons of high national professional per- <laughs> B shall be distinguished persons of high national professional reputation in their respective fields who are capable of exercising the independent and objective judgment necessary to the fulfillment of their role in ensuring and facilitating the review, transmission to the public, and public disclosure of records related to the government's understanding of and activities associated with unidentified anomalous phenomena, technologies of unknown origin, and non-human intelligence who possess an appreciation of the value of such material to the public, scholars, and government And C, shall include at least one current or former national security official, one current or former foreign service official, one scientist or engineer, one economist, one professional historian, and one sociologist. Those last three, that's interesting. In general, the review board shall have the authority to act in a manner prescribed under this title, including the authority to direct government offices to complete identification aids and organize unidentified anomalous phenomena records, to direct government offices to transmit to the archivist unidentified anomalous phenomena records as required under this title, including segregable portions of unidentified anomalous phenomena records and substitutes and summaries of unidentified anomalous phenomena records that can be publicly disclosed to the fullest extent. 
to obtain access to unidentified anomalous phenomena records that have been identified and organized by a government office, to direct a government office to make available to the review board and, if necessary, investigate the facts surrounding additional information, records, or testimony from individuals which the review board has reason to believe are required to fulfill its functions and responsibilities under this title, and request the Attorney General to subpoena private persons to compel with testimony, records, and other information relevant to its responsibilities under this title. D. Require any government office to account in writing for the destruction of any records related relating to unidentified anomalous phenomena, technologies of unknown origin, or non-human intelligence. And it goes on and on. Hold hearings, administer oaths, subpoena witnesses and documents, use the Federal Acquisition Service in the same manner and under the same conditions as other executive agencies. This panel is fully vested with all the power and authority it needs to basically go knocking on any door that it wants and um, get the information that it needs. So um, even even to the point that uh, if a, an organization or a, a private entity destroyed documents or destroyed records, they are required to provide some kind of summary of what it was that they destroyed to this group. So, um, I mean, you can... I'm sure there are going to be attempts to, to hide stuff, um, but this is pretty detailed, pretty specific stuff. And down here towards the end, under sense of Congress, it is the sense of Congress that the Attorney General should assist the review board in good faith to unseal any records that the review board determines to be relevant and held under seal by a court or under the injunction of secrecy of a grand jury. The Secretary of State should contact any foreign government that may hold material relevant to unidentified anomalous phenomena, technologies of unknown origin, or non-human intelligence, and seek disclosure of such material. And all heads of executive agencies should cooperate in full with the review board to seek the disclosure of all material relevant to, the, to unidentified anomalous phenomena, technologies of unknown origin, and non-human intelligence consistent with the public interest. So there you have it. I'm no legal scholar, but I know how to read. And um, that's some pretty specific wording. And if this were to go through the way that it's worded, I don't see any way that uh, you can wiggle out of it. Um, what do you think? Am I missing something? I'm going to put a link to this in the show notes. Take a look, read through it when you have some time, and uh, let me know your thoughts. Come back to the comments section. Any questions, thoughts, opinions, feelings? Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Please like and subscribe, share this video, and I'll see you in the next one.